And hello guys, I'm Fire and welcome to part 2 to the BF4 wishlist. Let's continue. Another thing I really would like to see in Battlefield 4 is the more customization. And I don't mean about the guns because I don't want to, I'm not looking for something like Ghost Recon like gun customization, no, nothing like that. But something as far as the character customization. Because I would really love to see a game where we don't see like tons of clones running around seeing the same person all over the place and everyone looks the same it looks really weird and it would be really cool and interesting to actually implement some type of customization and be able to change someone's helmet or put on a mask or change uh like different presets of people's faces or something it would be pretty cool to see that and also maybe a little bit of change in uniform or whatever they're wearing such as a lot of people would really like to see a ghillie suit on the recon kind of like what Bad Company 2 did and as well as Bad Company and being able to see have some variety in something because I love having a lot of variety and uh, something that you can like change up a bit to make your character yours so that way you're not just some random clone that looks exactly like everyone else. It would be pretty cool to see that. Another cool thing would be is that was starting up with the premium um, like soldier upgrades is uh, being able to put chem camo on your guns. It would be pretty cool to do. I know it's something that a lot of people would hate hate uh, kind of like the it's kind of like a Call of Duty ripoff but it really isn't. It would be pretty cool to put some kind of camouflage on every gun not just certain ones for assignments but having something for every gun, kind of like, say for instance, you want to just like, nothing like too dramatic, like gold camouflage or something, something that's actually real. Kind of like, like a woodland camouflage if you're in a jungle setting, which would be amazing if Battlefield 4 had a jungle setting map, and ha having that woodland kind of camouflage in that kind of setting would actually look really cool. And having maybe a blue uh, kind of camouflage in a city environment, it would be interesting as well, because since uh, BF3 has such a lot of blue in it, I really do hope BF4 doesn't do that. And DICE decides to take out that blue tint all over the place, especially in maps kind of like Metro and Grand Bazaar, because all those maps look so blue, it does not even look natural at all, and I really do hope they change that. Another thing I really do hope they change is the scope glares and I'm not talking just for snipers I mean even the six times scope for uh, assault rifles carbines you know where you can have a six times scope at, which isn't for snipers for some reason I really do hope they change that because you could have maybe a 12 times scope and seven eight and it has that giant flashlight that just shines even in a night environment I understand if you're looking at the Sun and it has this really bright light but if you're looking on the opposite side or even in a night environment or in metro, it, there shouldn't be a giant flashlight that just shines no matter what. If, if they were going to do that, I can understand it does like a quick glare, like a flash, because that's what it's like doing. But if you move away, it should change that. And since they're going to be using 80% of the Frostbite 2 engine, I really do hope they start to do that rather than just being lazy and saying, okay... Make it just shine bright, and might as well just put a flashlight on your sniper, because that's all it's going to do. Another cool thing that I, I've i never actually experienced, but a lot of people have been wanting this, and what I've been hearing, it sounds really cool, is Commander Mode. Commander Mode was a very useful feature that Battlefield 2 had, and since I never actually experienced it or seen it all together, I've heard a lot of things about it. From what I've heard, it's actually really cool and it's something that Battlefield 3 suffered from that they didn't have. And seeing a lot of people talk about it, such as uh, I was reading through the forums and Battle Log, and uh, this guy, Max here, I, uh, hopefully I said that right, uh, was commenting about Commander Mode and saying how uh, they DICE decided to remove it to get all together and put in with the Mav and the Mortar and with the commander person and the squad, the squad leader, and a few people can take the job of one person that can be direct, like directly doing something, rather than hiding in a mav and at the spawn, 
and just flying around doing a job that a commander can be doing rather than someone not doing much on, actually on the battlefield. But however, consoles, it ju I don't think it would have worked that well. But since the next gen consoles are coming out, I really do think that it'll be able to do it. And that would be really cool to see for Battlefield 4. And I really do hope they do. Another thing I hope that they fix is spotting. Uh, every every now and then when I try to spot somebody, it doesn't always spot somebody. I can look at someone directly and it just doesn't want to do it for some reason. So I have to constantly tap the, the spot button over and over again and finally it's, it spots it. Spots the person or spots whatever I am trying to spot like a vehicle or something. And it doesn't always do that. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a glitch. I don't know if I'm just like doing something wrong. But every now and then, I do experience times where spotting doesn't always work. Another very interesting subject that I really do uh, have some, uh, like, I don't know, some questioning if actually if I actually do want it for BF4, but it would be women soldiers in BF4. I don't know if people would want to have women characters. I know there is a lot of talk about saying how Battlefield is very sexist or... Uh, Dice doesn't want to put women in because they think they're weak or something. I, I'm actually against all that. I'm not even going to go into that. But what I'm saying is that if they were to put women characters inside a game, a lot of people would either either exploit it or make jokes about it. And I think Dice is trying to like uh, stay away from all that in order to keep it like user-friendly or something. But then again, if you think about it, if they do put women characters in this game, that means there's probably going to be a lot of talk saying how uh, people would only choose them because they're smaller and they're going to be harder targets to hit. And then the the like the men soldiers will be like the common person and they're going to be easier to hit because they're like uh, bigger targets. And that reminds me back in Halo 3 where you had the option to choose a Spartan or an Elite. And if you don't know what Halo is, I'm, I apologize, but Halo is really cool. But in multiplayer, you can choose a Spartan or an Elite. And the a lot of people would choose the Elite because it was a lot harder to hit the head. And since Halo is very, very, it goes really strongly, strongly with accuracy and hitting the head, uh, hitting the Elite was kind of hard because in the back, you couldn't hit him in the back of the head because he has some big like hump on it and you could barely hit them and then some people would even choose a helmet that was extremely small and makes the headshots even harder to hit and then the spartans were of course were the normal people and you can shoot them in the head from all sides and that's why i'm guessing uh bungie decided not to use that kind of uh, game for when they made reach and why 343 industries didn't decide to do that as well when they made halo 4. And that kind of ties in the same thing with Battlefield. If they were to do that, it can cause a lot of talk saying how it's going to be unfair if somebody chooses the, the women character rather than the man because they're going to be smaller targets and a lot harder to hit while they're e maybe even bunny hopping. And that goes into the next topic, is about bunny hopping. Should it be in Battlefield 4? I, uh, I don't think that it's like uh, cheating or anything I just think it's really annoying to see bunny hoppers in Battlefield 3 it's just really annoying and although there are times when you can easily kill them there are times that they, you just can't for some reason I don't know if it's a glitch I don't know if it's just because of the tactic but there are times when I could be shooting at someone and I don't get any hit markers I don't know if that's just me but that's that happens every now and then I don't know I think it mostly happens in Metro, and that's most of the time when I see it the most. Uh, there are times when I see people just bunny hopping to get to another flag faster because it actually is a lot faster. I have no idea how, like uh, someone that's running or just bunny hopping all the way over there and somehow is faster than someone that is running. Uh, I don't know, it's dice logic. Uh, so that's just something I, I, I don't know if they should take it out or not. I think that... They should, I guess, because it kind of ruins the effect of, well, playing correctly. So, I don't know, maybe it's just a gimmick or something, but uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens about that. I know once uh, BF4 is going to come out, there's going to be a lot of bunny hoppers that are going to try, and I guess that's when we're going to find out if it works.
And I know this is a very long list, but bear with me, guys, and I hope you guys are having a good time. <laughs> well, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about are about the maps. Alright, so in Battlefield 3, there are a lot of maps that really lean towards one side, and it becomes a very one-sided game. Uh, let's talk about the canals, for instance. Uh, we have the Americans, the U.S. team, starting out on a carrier that doesn't move, while the the Russian side start with two tanks, one chopper, one and uh, a vodnik. And while the U.S. side does have the Amtraks and the LAV and two little birds, I find it very hard for the U.S. team to always have a chance of actually getting to the objective because they have to actually go across the the water. They have to go across the uh, huge distance on the ocean, while the Russian side have already two tanks coming up on the sea flag and being able to drop off people onto A because A is usually where all the commotion is at. That's where the big fight is and everyone wants to get that flag for some reason. Now, however, there are times when the US team is being is able to dominate the Russian side, but I hardly ever see that. Not enough to say that it happens a lot. Now, I don't know if this happens with the PC side, but this is something that's, that consoles uh, suffer from deeply. They really do. Uh, suffer from this because there's just not a lot of players to uh, being able to uh, like fight back against the Russian side because every time I'm on the Russian side it always comes to just a very boring game because once they take all the flags all it's gonna do is just spawn kill those tanks and whatever little birds that try to fly and take off the carrier because the other plane the other helicopter will obviously just uh, like sit around there and kill whatever it spawns up now, you can say that, okay, those guys are being noobs because they deserve to be spawn killed. Well, there are times that even stingers can't take down a little bird against a, like a very skillful pilot. There are times where I can even use a stinger and not take down somebody because they're just that skillful. So, it's not always the, the people on the carrier's fault. However, it would be kind of cool to finally see a carrier actually move, which then goes back to my the naval warfare kind of thing. Seeing the the carrier actually move will give the chance give the US side a chance to actually get to the the objective a lot faster unlike the the tanks because obviously uh, a squad of tanks can easily take down an M track or an LAV if you're very like you're using a lot of teamwork and then there's also map creation a lot of maps I have uh, been seeing in BF3 is that they're very close quarters there are a lot of maps that are very close quarters and I do understand that consoles they have to like being able to find people I know that but there are maps like the majority of the maps are very close quarters and there's hardly any maps that are outside and I would love to see some snow maps or a night map that doesn't look blue and I would also like to see a jungle map it and that's what I loved about Bad Company 2 because when I played that game it had very nice night maps where it actually looked dark it had snow maps it had jungle maps urban maps like very wide open maps it was just it had everything it had variety and since it had variety it made that game such an amazing game while bf3 it kind of suffered from that because it felt like a lot of the maps were very similar they had very small choke points they didn't have a lot of line of sights in a lot of places and it very and it since it had suppression it made different guns suffer and I really do hope they fix that for the next game and uh, hopefully they have a lot more variety and make the, the maps like not only look good but be able to play good as well because that's something that was really suffering in this game and another thing that was really suffering was just how unfinished it was. BF3 did not feel like it was a very good finished game. Ever since the beta of course, the beta is going to have a lot of problems, but that doesn't give it an excuse to not being able to finish it. And that is why I really do hope DICE takes their time making this game, but obviously with EA behind them and uh, pulling them and telling them when to the, the set up this game, when to do that, because of course they're money whores. And I really do wish that DICE leaves EA, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know if it's because of a contract or anything, but I really do hope they find somebody else, but I don't know. And also, this is a very small little, like, thing they could put into the game, and it's not going to affect too much. But having the ability to automatically take off the HUD would also be a really awesome thing. I would love to, 
to take off the HUD in a lot of situations because then it would make the game look and feel a lot better. It would also make it very challenging to play and give it that realistic like touch to it as well. And with that, a lot of people will be able to make machinimas. And speaking of, ma of machinimas, make having a battle recorder in the game would make it so much easier to do that. It would also make the game like a lot more competitive because now with a uh, battle recorder you can actually watch games play you can watch you can commentate you can spectate you can do all these things and which will give it that mlg feeling and being able to use it for a lot of situations you can also watch people how they play you can learn take notes you can make videos it will be amazing if they were to put that in because i've been hearing that battle recorder was going to be in battlefield 3 but once it came out, it wasn't in it. And I and I thought, okay, maybe it was going to be only for the PC, which I can understand. But it wasn't even for the PC. And I was like, what the hell? So hopefully with BF4, the DICE will decide to put it in. Because a lot of these new games are putting in some kind of recording device. And ever since I, I can remember back in Halo, and when I was playing Halo, we had the this thing where we can record our games and make videos and like uh, keep our greatest moments that we ever had and then when Call of Duty did it uh, they started doing it as well so hopefully Battlefield brings it back because that would be a really cool feature they have and I would love to see that because then I'll be able to make videos and make it so much easier too the, for everyone else so that would be a really cool thing to have also another thing I really found to be annoying in BF3 and I hope they take it out for BF4 is giving the ability to lie down prone inside a wall because that is really really stupid and a lot of uh, times because since there's not a lot of destruction in the game and a lot of parts of the maps on each on the battlefield 3 there's a lot of parts that you can just lie down inside the wall and there's no way to shoot you other than the top part of your body and even though there are times where it's see really easy to see there are spots in the map that are hard to find and if you're lying down prone inside a wall and there's no opposite side where you can see your legs, you're going to be in a very good spot. And I really do hope they put in some type of prone block or something that will stop people from doing that. Because that's really something that annoys me the most when it comes to uh, lying down prone. Because I have nothing against it. I just think that it's really stupid that you're able to lie down prone through a wall while other games... Uh, they tell you that you can't do that that there's no other you once you're that there's no way that you can get through a wall because that's highly unrealistic and it shouldn't even be in a video game because it just creates some kind it creates unbalance as far as unfairness and that's why I think that it should be taken out but for battlefield 4 there are a lot of things that a lot of people could wish for and I hope that at least some of them listen and dice and uh, try to put these kind of ideas in there and listen to their fans and listen to the community because in the end if if not for the community the battlefield wouldn't be anything and that's why i really do hope that not only all the things i've talked about and all the things that other people talk about also get into the game but make the game what it should be that's why i really do hope that battlefield 4 is not going to be a fail and i re also really do hope they make a, a back company 3 hopefully in the future because that game that game should be amazing because Bad Company 2 was awesome. So I really do hope that all this happens. I, I'm sorry that this, this list was so long, but there was a lot to talk about and uh, a lot of things I wanted to say. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you're new to my channel, to stay around, you can like subscribe. You can uh, leave a comment below and rate the video because it really helps me out. And I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you on the battlefield. See you guys.